Hi right, guys, this is our first video for Tuesday, March 24th. We we're picking up the Northern Renaissance um, for review. Okay, uh, by the late 15th century, Italian Renaissance humanism began to affect the rest of Europe. Although the writers of the Italian Renaissance were Christian, they thought less about religious questions than their northern counterparts. In the north, questions concerning religion were paramount. Christianity had arrived in the north later than in the south, and northerners at this time were still seeking ways to deepen their Christian beliefs, understanding, and display what good humanists they were. They believed they could achieve the, this higher level of studying uh, early Christian authors. In this sense, the northern renaissance was a more religious movement than the renaissance in Italy. Eventually, northern writers such as Erasmus and uh, Thomas More, often referred to as Christian humanists, criticized their mother country. I'm sorry, the mother church. To their horror, they found that more extreme voices of dissent, for example, that of Martin Luther, had not used their methodology to find ways to better the Catholic Church, but to show why the church had strayed from the will of God. So, Erasmus and Sir Thomas More. The greatest of the northern humanists was Desiderius Erasmus. You can thank Erasmus the next time you use such tired cliches as where there's smoke, there's fire, because he collected this and many other ancient and contemporary proverbs in his adages. Erasmus is uh, in the praises of folly, in the praise of folly. He used satire as a means of criticizing what he thought were the problems of the church. His handbook of the Christian night emphasized the idea of inner faith as opposed to the other outer forms of worship, such as partaking of the sacraments. Erasmus' Latin tran translation of the New Testament also played a major role in the 16th century, movement to better understand the life of the early Christians. Though its close textual analysis of the Acts of the Apostles, Erasmus was the first impressed with Luther, Luther's attacks on the church and even insist, insist, I'm sorry, initiated a correspondence with him. Eventually, however, the two men found that they had significant disagreements. Unlike Luther, Erasmus wanted to reform the church, not abandon it. He could never accept Luther, uh, Luther's belief that a man does not have free will. Another important northern humanist was the Englishman Sir Thomas More. A friend of Erasmus, he wrote the classic work Utopia. More was the, uh, critical of uh, many aspects of contemporary society and sought to depict a civilization in which political and economic injustices were limited by having all property held in common. More, like Erasmus, was highly critical of certain practices of his church, but in the end he, he gave his life for his beliefs. In 1534, Henry VIII had More, who was serving, as the, king, serving the king as chancellor, executed for refusing to take an oath recognizing Henry as the head of the Church of England. All right, Northern Renaissance culture. The Northern Renaissance also represented more than simply the Christian humanism of in individuals like Moore and Erasmus. Talented painters from the North, while clearly influenced by the artists of the Italian Renaissance, with whom they often came into contact on visits to the Italian peninsula, were also created their own unique style. This is seen, for example, in the work of Albrecht Durier, a brilliant draftsman whose woodcuts powerfully lent su support to the doctrinal revolution brought about by his fellow German Martin Luther. The illiterate peasants were moved by Durier's art than by Luther's text. More by Durier's art than Luther's text. The greatest achievement in the arts in the Northern Europe in the 16th, 17th centuries took place in England a land that had up until then been a bit of a cultural backwater, with the notable exception of Geoffrey Chaucer, whose Canterbury Tales were based on the uh, Decameron, Decameron by uh, Boccaccio. There is all, there's perhaps no way to explain the emergence of the sheer number of men possessing exceptional talent during the reign of Queen Elizabeth because providing with her with much credit uh, for this cultural awakening seems to be unwarranted. In fact, much of what we refer to as the Elizabethan Renaissance occurred during the reign of her cousin and heir, James I, who came after him, her. Although Christopher Marlowe and Ben Jonson were both writers of significant repute, the age produced the unrivaled genius of William Shakespeare. Though little is known of Shakespeare's life and the question of the uh, providence of his plays will never be answered to the satisfaction of all, this man, who received little more than a prim primary school education, apparently was able to author plays such as Hamlet and King Lear, works that revel, reveal um, an unsurpassed understanding of the human psyche as well as a genius for dramatic intensity. Art right, the printing press. The search for new ways to produce text became important in, late medieval, in the late medieval period. 
when the number of, illiter of literate individuals rose considerably as the numbers of European universities increased. The traditional method of producing books via a monk working dutifully in a monast monastic scriptorium was clearly unable to meet this heightened demand. Johann Gutenberg from the German city of Mainz introduced movable type to Western Europe. Between 1452 and 1453, Gutenberg printed approximately 200 Bibles and spent a great deal of money making his Bibles, as ornate as any handwritten version. He eventually went broke. The significant increase in literacy in the 16th century supports the theory that few inventions in human history have had as great an impact as the printing press. It is hard to imagine the Reformation spreading so rapidly without the books that inform people of the nature of a religious debate. Power of the Printing Press Historians consider the printing press to be one of the most culturally significant inventions in all human history. The ability to rapidly disseminate printed materials almost certainly led to the spread of the Reformation, among other historical um, events. The Protestant Reformation In Western Europe in the year 1500, the simple declarative sentence, I went to church on Sunday, could mean only one thing, as only one church existed in the West. At the top of this hierarchical church sat the Pope in Rome, to whom all of Europe looked for religious guidance. Several decades later, the Protestant Reformation movement resulted in this great split in Western Christ Christendom, which dethroned the, the Pope as a single religious authority in Europe. Although it took several decades, eventually there was a Catholic response to this challenge known as the Catholic Reformation. In part, the Reformation of the 16th century was a reflection of the ways in which Europe was changing. The humanism of the Renaissance, particularly in the north of Europe, had led to individuals to question certain practices such as uh, efficacy of religious relics and the value of to one's salvation of living the life of a monk. In addition, the printing press had made it possible to produce Bibles in even greater number, which made the church's exclusive right to interpret the scriptures seem particularly vexing to those who can now read the text themselves. The rise of power monarchical states also create a situation in which some rulers began to question why they needed to listen to a distant authority in Rome or Vienna. One important, one important thing to keep in mind uh, is that on the AP European History exam, you are not looking for absolute religious truths. So when dealing with re religious questions, leave your personal beliefs at the door and think like a historian. Meaning like, just don't get into your own details. Just write what you, what, what you talked about as far as facts and details. Okay. Problems facing the church on the eve of the Reformation. It is important for the student of the 16th century Reformation to remember that that the Reformation is far more than just the story of Martin Luther. While Luther is the central figure in the story, to reduce it simply to uh, his own struggles against the Catholic Church oversimplifies what is actually a complex and compelling story. The Church was facing significant problems on the eve of the Reformation. Some of these problems resulted from the crisis of the 14th century, when the Black Death, a ferocious outbreak of plague, struck the population of Europe. These problems included a growing anti-clericalism, -cler a measure of di disrespect towards the clergy, stemming part from what many perceived to be the poorest performance, a poor performance of individual clergymen during the crisis of the plague. Geoffrey Chaucer, The Canterbury Tales, and Boccaccio's uh, Decameron reveals some of the uh, satirical edge with with literature society now greeted cl uh, cl clergymen. Additionally, this period with witness a rise in uh, pietism, or the notion of a direct relationship between the individual and God thereby reducing the importance of the hierarchical church based in Rome. The 14th century was undoubtedly a disaster for the church, with the papacy under French dominance in the city of Avignon for almost 70 years. It was further damaged by the Great Schism, which for a time resulted in three competing popes ex excommunicating each other. Other problems on the eve of the Reformation included a poorly educated lower clergy. Peasant priests, who in many cases knew just a little bit of Latin, proved to be unable to put forward a learned response to Luther's challenge to the church. Simony, the selling of church offices, was another considerable problem, as was the fact that some clergy had held multiple positions, thus making them less than effective in terms of ministering to their flocks. In response to some of these problems, a number of movements arose in the late Middle Ages that would be declared heretical by the church. In England, John Wycliffe questioned the, wily, the worldly wealth of the church the miracle of transubstanti transubstantiation, the teachings of penance, and a, f a foretaste of the ideas of Luther, the selling of indulgences. Wycliffe urged his followers, known uh, for unclear reasons as the Lollards, to read the Bible and to interpret it themselves. 
To aid in this task, Wycliffe translated the Bible into English. In Bohemia, modern-day Czech Republic, Jan Hus, or John Hus, Hus led a revolt uh, that combined religious and nationalistic elements. Hus, the rector of the University of Prague, argued that it was the authority of the Bible and not the institutional church that ultimately mattered. Like Wycliffe, he was horrified by what he saw as the immoral behavior of the clergy. The, this antagonism toward the clergy and its special role in administering the sacraments led Hus to argue that the congregation should be given the cup during the Mass as well as the wafer, something that the, only the clergymen were allowed. Hus was called before the Council of Constance in 1415 by Pope Martin V, and although he was promised safe passage, he was condemned as a heretic and burned at the stake. In response, his followers in Bohemia staged a rebellion, which took many years to put down.